Hi there, my name is DJ Hombre from Digital DJ Tips, and today I'm taking a look at the PDJ, the Portable DJ Units by JD Sounds. We've, we saw this last year and more recently at NAMM 2013, and finally I managed to get hold of a copy myself. So, uh, well, what is it? It comes in, in this beautiful box. Uh, it's very well packaged, by the way. I wouldn't normally talk about packaging, but uh, it's more than just a, a regular cardboard box. It's got some nice lining in it. It comes with all your power supplies and a nice little manual as well. Um, so, as you can see, it is incredibly thin. Um, on the front of the unit, you have two touchscreen um, displays. And in the centre section, you've got a mixer uh, with some six buttons along the top, a crossfader at the bottom. And we'll be taking a closer look at this in a second. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's very thin, it is incredibly light. I think it's under 300 grams in weight, so it is very, very light indeed. Um, it's made out of, I think it's plastic, uh, the casing, and at the back of it, there are two uh, rubberized sections so it doesn't slip out of your hands as you're using it. Um, at the front of the unit you have a microphone input, headphone output, at the side you've got a power button and an SD card slot. The SD card slot is important because um, the onboard storage is limited to 4 gig uh, so that seems very, very small to me. Uh, so 4 gig in size memory but you can boost that with uh, an SD card up to 32 gig. And round at the back you have a line input, a line output and a USB, a mini USB port there as well. So you would use the uh, mini USB to connect up to your laptop and that's a Mac or a, a regular Windows laptop and um, you could transfer your music on there uh, to the hard drive or you could even um, deliver firmware updates which the developers have been doing recently. So let's take a closer look at what the PDJ can do. So let's start by loading up a track. You swipe along the bottom to get to your library page. You can navigate up and down this using touch screen or you use the buttons there. Now you can sort the tracks by file name, track name, BPM. You can even do a very, very basic search. Um, with WAV files, okay, so the, the file formats are WAV or MP3 at the moment. The developers are looking to extend this to other file formats. With WAV files, you have limited metadata, so track name doesn't make much sense. And you can uh, sort ascending or descending. So once I've found a tracker I, I want to load into this deck, I click the button, I can click load again, and I can do that all on the touch screen as well. So it's brought up the track. Uh, so what would you do first? You'd probably set some cue points. Um, so you'd you'd use your little jog wheel to skip through the track, or you'd use the progress bar along the top, and you use the, the little button here to navigate this icon up and down this list. So I can set cue point two. I can go a bit further. Set cue point three. Scroll right to the end. Set cue point four. And then if I go back to one, so you can see the cue points have all been set in different colours. They get marked in the progress bar along the top. And on the track library page, they also get displayed there as well. Uh, so during playback, um, if I wanted to listen to this deck uh, through the headphones, I click the, the volume button. You can see the little headphone icon there. If I wanted to quickly get both decks via the headphones, I click it again, you can see both headphones there, and I can cut the headphone volume completely. So during playback, uh, you can use these cues to jump back to, so they act like hot cues. I can also use tap tempo to adjust the calculated BPM. And it's fairly basic, that tap tempo, there's no instant double or halving of that BPM. And I can do some, um, some looping, some hot looping as well. So while that's looping, uh, if I found that that loop wasn't quite on beat, I can just move it back a tiny fraction or forward a fraction uh, by using left and right sides of that deck. And when I click the loop again, it comes out. If I've got the icon right at the top, I can use 
top and bottom of the deck to do pitch bending and you can control the pitch strength, uh, pitch bend strength through the settings page. Uh, if the little icon is on one of the cues, I can use this to do some fairly basic scratch emulation. <clears throat> And uh, if I've got a deck, uh, a track loaded in the second deck, I could do um, auto sync to, to match up the BPMs if I wanted to. Uh, I can change the pitch slider here. It is fairly fiddly to use and trying to hit an accurate uh, figure there is a bit difficult. And if I wanted to return to zero, I just move my finger from original to now and it pulls that right back to zero. And I can also enable pitch locking on that. So what else can you do? That's simple playback. On another screen, the next screen along, so you swipe along this way, you've got the EQs, which you can adjust by using the slider here. So that moves them all at once. If you didn't want to move, say, the mids, you can deselect it at the bottom, and you can set them all back to the initial value there. Now the other clever thing is through the settings you can get the crossfader to uh, affect the EQ as you move it across. So as I'm moving this across you should see the EQ gradually come down and as I bring this back up the EQ comes back up. So clever stuff. You come onto the pad uh, sample bit now so you can load your own samples they have to be in WAV format and there's uh, 24 pads. Uh, one shot which will play to the end of the sample, loop, which will go in time to the track uh, you're playing, and drone, which will play for as long as your finger is on the sample pad. So the next screen is a simple 16 step sequencer. So for me, I didn't use this much at all. Uh, I think if I was playing regular house music with a regular 4-4 beat, this would be fine. Um, in order to fire it off, you need to press uh, the go button using this and it would fire off and it syncs automatically to the, the uh, BPM of the track on this deck. Um, but what I found is most of my tracks have some element of swing to them so it didn't really feel too good and like with the sample pad screen you can adjust the volume. Now before I go too much further with the sample pads uh, a point to note is that the recording within the PDJ uh, won't allow you to use the sample pads at the same time. And that's because of the resource uh, required within the unit to uh, handle recordings. It's a bit of a shame because you can do that in most DJ apps now anyway. So, and then you come to a bunch of settings and there's a whole stack of settings pages um, such as enabling recording, um, you can also get it to automatically mix between the two decks and there's a bunch of system settings there as well. So you've seen I've been using function A and function B to, to uh, scroll through different bits here. The effects are fairly good. You've got a phaser, a flanger, a bit crusher, an echo, um, a high pass, low pass filter. So what you do to select that, you choose whichever one you want. You click on that so it's selected, that LEDs change colour and you can change the effect with the dial at the top. And on some of these if you press and rotate that it does something slightly different to the effect as well. And you can have multiple effects fired at any one time. So there you've got three effects. If I wanted to clear those I just go along and select click and it's gone or I can go and it's all back to normal. So that's the PDJ. It's great fun to use and it's portable, which means I can take it anywhere I like and start creating a DJ set. It is incredibly fiddly because it is small, um, so those controls are incredibly tiny. Uh, so it does take a bit of getting used to. And okay, the touch screens aren't up to the same resolution as your high-end smartphones nowadays, but they do the job perfectly well. The multitude of inputs and outputs on this mean that it's head and shoulders above Apple um, so you have a line input, um, a line output, your, your microphone input, as well as your stereo headphone output as well. 
So it is, uh, is very good in that respect. In order to achieve the same for an iOS device, you probably need to buy a docking station for it. And in that case, you've then lost your portability. You'd need to be chained to the wall uh, with a power supply. So the PDJ is doing very well there. Um, it does have its limitations. The internal storage is limited to 4 gig, but you can expa expand that to 32 gig uh, with an SD card. Then again, SD cards are a little bit dated nowadays, um, but uh, it, it, it does keep the, the nice uh, look and feel of, of the device because the SD card slots neatly in the side. You don't have a clunky USB stick sticking out. Um, the, the thing that may put some folk off is the price. Now, it's priced at around 600 US dollars, which does seem rather expensive to me. However, you are getting a lot of kit for your money. You get all those inputs and outputs. You get a nice finish to it. You get the, um, the music, obviously, playback. You get a sample pad. You get uh, the 16-step uh, uh, sequencer as well. Um, and, and some effects to play with, too. So that does seem quite expensive, but there are other products out there as well uh, which could do similar things for less money, but all of them would require you to be plugged into a main socket. Um, so you could look at, if you were a new DJ thinking of getting started with DJing, you probably wouldn't look to the PDJ to start with. You'd probably look to a cheap DJ setup so you can set up uh, at home in your bedroom and get started with that, get the basics down, and then start to look at going portable. Um, if you own an iOS device, chances are you, you probably do, because they're incredibly popular, then you may well stick with your DJ apps on that, because they are very good quality nowadays, and the screen resolution on the iOS devices is incredible. But you're going to be limited to inputs and outputs. Uh, so there you go, there's PDJ. Um, a full review will be available on Digital DJ Tips. And I have also done a few demo reels uh, which are available on YouTube and Vimeo as well.